Happy birthday iPhone. Today marks 10 years since the original iPhone was released and what a journey it's been. I'd like to take a moment, a video, to reflect on these changes. When Steve Jobs took the stage and announced the new iPhone, nobody really knew this would be the turning point of all smartphones and even the reviewers that originally said it would fail have since then taken back their word. Now fast forward 10 years and we've gone through four sizes of the iPhone. Coincidence that it matches the four signal bar in iOS 11? I think not. There is one thing you guys do need to know if you don't already, the iPhone, although it is the first iPhone, wasn't Apple's first phone. This actually was. They announced it on stage, well Steve Jobs did. Uh, today we are introducing the iTunes phone. This is a phone that we have worked on with Motorola that has an iTunes client in it where you can play iTunes music that you've gotten from your CD library or bought from the online store right on your phone. It actually is the iTunes phone from Motorola. So you actually got iTunes in a very similar interface that we're used to seeing on the older iPods where you can go ahead and see all of your songs. You could store, I believe, up to 100 songs. And I mean, look at the difference here. Apple wasn't proud of it, that's for sure. So I go there and I just resume my music right back to where it was. Well, I was supposed to resume my music right back to where it was. Then they released an updated version of it, which was sleeker, kind of a little bit cooler looking, but still it lacked the interface touchscreen display that the iPhone actually had. No wonder these things really didn't sell that well. So I'd like to start with the hardware changes. 10 years is a long time and it's certainly reflected here. The original iPhone still looks good though, as the bezels are very slim. It looked high tech then, still looks pretty decent now. It's of course a lot fatter, but resembles the same shape as the original iPhone, just the new one is a little bit more flattened and has a bigger display. Port wise, it did have a headphone jack and the 30 pin connector on the bottom, the orientation of the buttons and SIM card placement was a little different. The back of the 2G was flush, very smooth looking, no protrusions, no camera lenses there, and you got a color choice of silver. Now you get five colors. We're spoiled now with the colors, but the silver will always match the iPhone quite well. Now I personally never got the opportunity to unbox one of these when it was sealed, but I imagine it was a very clean experience compared to the smartphone makers at the time. Apple was very particular with their packaging. The newer iPhone 7 Plus packaging is quite similar, just less plastic. Apple is going green, so all of the packaging and the little sealing tape is replaced with paper now, which is a great move. And here's the original box for the Bluetooth headset as well. In a way, it looked a lot like an AirPod, but 10 years ago, this was pretty sophisticated tech. It had sensors, microphones, and a battery in such a small package. And the cool thing about it is software-wise, you got a very similar control to what you get now even with iOS 11, showing the battery in the status bar. And yes, I tried to connect AirPods, don't work. All right, let's go ahead and check out iPhone OS 1.0 versus iOS 11. It was called something even different back in the day. That's how long ago this was. Passcode screens, so, uh, not too far off, Apple still uses the dialer. This one is kind of transparent. This one's got a milky effect going on, but there it is. So both are quite responsive. So I wanna bring your attention to something that Apple brought back in iOS 11 that was found on the original iPhone. When you would unlock your device on the newer 3.1.3 firmware, you could immediately begin swiping it. There was no lag there. And it's a bit funny to see something the old iPhone does better than the newer ones on iOS 10 right now. So as you can see, you unlock it. You can't swipe until like way later. Now on iOS 11, check it out. You unlock it and you can begin swiping immediately. So that's a change Apple brought back from the old iPhone that I love. It's kind of crazy just to see the comparison here. At the time, the iPhone 2G, uh, the display was pretty advanced as most smartphone displays were tiny, it was massive. You know, now you can fit that display into the iPhone 7 Plus, not once, not four times, not nine times, but about 18 times into that 1920 by 1080 display. And this one is already outdated uh, compared to most competitors nowadays. So that's quite the difference. Speed wise, you can see quite the upgrade on iOS 11 with a monstrous multi-core score that'll eat this one up so many times over. Quite the advancement. All right, so let's compare the old with the new. I wanted to start with something simple like the keyboard. In iOS 11, they actually brought over a keyboard that makes it just as comfortable to type as the old one where you can reach the entire display. This is actually the same size, almost one for one here as the original iPhone. So get that comfortable feeling, whichever hand you're using with over here 
on iOS 11 now. You couldn't do that over here. There was no trackpad 3D touch. You typed and that's it. The keystrokes even sounded a bit different. You go to your home screen, can't scroll here, no scrolling because you couldn't add apps. There was no reason to even scroll back in the day on iOS 1.0. But hey, even if you wanted to rearrange your icons, you could not do that. Now on iOS 11, you can even rearrange multiple icons by adding them to the queue and dropping them wherever. Uh, tough luck, on iOS 1.0, can't even move a single one. Dock icons actually had labels back then, and the dock wasn't very uh, transparent. It had an actual uh, design to it in the background. Something interesting in iOS 11 though is that Apple made a major throwback in the calculator to the old days of iOS 1.0 and 2.0, as you can see here with the round icons here. Very, very similar. Of course, you can't do the landscape calculator and get more uh, options. That's only available on the newer ones there, but it's a really cool throwback for the calculator. Even the weather app still has a little similarity here, as you can see. I wanted to show you the animation speed here. Look at that. It opens it up faster onto the original one sometimes. So uh, for something like the iPod or music, it's actually not too bad. Closing apps on iOS 11 is a little bit faster. As you can see, the animation is shortened, but the iPhone keeps up in launching apps. That's very surprising. Of course, you still have the original YouTube application. It doesn't work anymore, will not let you connect, and you do have Google Maps built in as a stock app. iOS 11 still doesn't let you choose your default apps, so it's very nice to be able to use Google's on the original iPhone, one of the benefits. The phone apps couldn't be more different. One is uh, very dark and gloomy, the other is very bright, uh, very, very simple, but the dialer is still pretty much the same size and a green call button. Of course, you don't get a control center when you swipe up, no notification center. You can't check your notifications, which now it's the cover sheet on iOS 11. Say you wanna take a screenshot of some content. Nope, your device just locks. That feature did not exist back in the day, as crazy as that is. No pages, no moving apps, no screenshots, no Siri. Holding it does nothing, double tapping it does nothing, no app switcher, absolutely nothing. The volume HUD though is kind of cool because it actually allows you to see through it. Now, you can't see anything behind it really, just uh, faint colors. So. That's one of the benefits this guy had to uh, iOS 11. And jumping into settings, just wanna show you guys, the orientation has changed in iOS 11. It's a little bit cleaner looking, uh, not as complicated, but this one's not complicated that much because there's really not much options on it. But over here, iOS 11.0 versus 1.0. It's crazy just how long it takes to load games and the type of games you would load on a device like this are so different from ones on newer phones. And now you can play console level games from the PS2 onto the iPhone with updated graphics. I mean, no one would have ever thought that that would have been a thing. And here it is, that's completely crazy. So let's get some photos to compare both of these. Just from the viewfinder here, you can see the stutter in the old one, it just couldn't keep up. And even if you jailbroke to record video, it looked like crap. You know, Apple only added video capability with the 3GS and that took a while, but let's get some photos going. And as you'd expect, Apple had 10 years to improve this camera, and they certainly did. Now the colors are more vibrant, and the image, of course, high resolution. All right, guys, so there it is. iOS 1.0 versus iOS 11.0, and more importantly, the first iPhone versus the newest and largest one. What a difference 10 years has made, and 11 will be the truly biggest difference yet, as it's gonna be a complete rework. So the future of iPhone, I'm sure it'll be great, and I'm hoping Apple does amazing things with it, adds a lot of features, but it's always important to understand where we started from, and with the original iPhone, on its original firmware, that was quite a departure from what we're used to today. Hope you guys enjoyed this look back and happy birthday, iPhone. Happy 10th birthday.